Uh, good morning. morning. 2.33%. That is the increase in population in Hillsborough County in the 12 months end of December 30, uh, 2015. 2.33%, most recent data that we have available. Think about that. If we keep up in this area, and by the way, Pinellas was only slightly below that. And there's a reason uh, around that. This is a great place to be. I've been here for six years. The quality of life is excellent. The opportunity is excellent. The cost of living is very good. There's culture. I could go on and on and on. Hockey team that I heard about. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great place to be. And uh, it, it, this is getting to be known. I mean, Florida has always had this growth, but Tampa Bay also, Orlando, this whole central area of Florida is pointing for accelerating growth. Think about that. If we um, if we compound at 2% over the next 10 years, that's a 25 to 30% increase in, in population in this area. Over 20 or 30 years, we're talking about a 50, 75% increase in population. Think about that in terms of economic activity. Uh, with that increase in population, uh, we're talking about an economy in 10 years that could be 50% bigger than it is today. In 20 years, it could be 75% bigger. We are poised to move in this direction. It is, without sounding too much like our mayor, it, it is the destiny of this region. Tampa Bay, Hillsborough County, the whole Tampa Bay area, and all of Central Florida, we are on the verge of being becoming one of the, you know, one of the super regions in, in the country and one of the biggest economic areas in the country. And you know, that path is laid out. That path, that is the default mode if we make the right decisions now and if, if, if uh, just momentum carries it, et cetera. That should be thought of as the default mode. And by the way, if I were sitting in front of, uh, this is kind of funny, I think. Uh, if I were sitting in front of uh, 12 big, excuse me, 10 big 12 presidents and the commissioner of the league, I would be making the exact same argument right now about why they need to bring USF and probably UCF also into the big 12. <laughs> but I think I was brought here to talk about transportation. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad to get that plug in. <laughs> so we think about that level of economic activity. Now you can have a honest, genuine discussion right now. Is that where we want to go as a region? Think about it though, with that level of economic activity, I like to think that in 10 years from now, the quantity and the quality of life will be improved in this region. Quantity of life, I would talk about in terms of the number of jobs available, but more importantly about the number of good high wage jobs available. It is inevitable as population increases, et cetera, economic activity grows, more public funding is thrown off, that is, goes for cultural institutions and generates more economic activity. The, the secondary tertiary effects are inevitable. They will happen and improve the economic lot of all of those in this whole Tampa Bay region. Quality of life, again, more money, more activity within the region. Better beaches, better cultures, better hockey team. <laughs> better facility down in the arena. Uh, you know, and, and, and more activity, more, more, uh, more choice, more freedom, as was talked about, et cetera. Uh, just better, uh, excuse me, better uh, quality of life for all those living in this area. All those, whether they're living in a, a two million dollar condo downtown Tampa, or whether they're living, you know, out in uh, in an impoverished area right now. Hopefully, with economic activity that boat lifts all tides. That's the real objective here is when I, when I think about it. Now to get from point A to point B, clearly we've got to move people around. And transportation is perhaps the most critical aspect in terms of where we will be in 2026 and where we will be in 2046. The economic vitality of this area will to a decent degree be determined by the decisions we need, we, that we make today and I love the term that Senator Brandis used of flexibility because we don't know the future. And he did, you know, it was a great discussion about the, the changes that are very hard to predict right now. We do need to have that flexibility, but we also be, need to be uh, examining and analyzing and having the discussion right now. Um, obviously, there have been some failed referendums over the last several years in this area. The good news is that we're discussing transportation. We need to dis discuss transportation more. We need to discuss transportation more loudly. 
we need to have more studies done. I am extremely encouraged, and we need to look at it on a regional <coughs> basis. I'm extremely encouraged that Hart is about to talk to undertake an 18 to 24 month study looking at transportation from a regional basis, um, funded by FGOT. I'm very encouraged that within downtown Tampa, a study is going to be underway looking over the next year to 18 months about the streetcar. And can we make that into a better mode of transportation to move people around? When we look ahead again for the next 10 to 30 years, I'm an all of the above person, and that means we've got to examine, we've got to analyze, we've got to think about every option out there. We've got to think about light rail, we've got to think about bus rides, rapid transportation, we've got to think about using the water and ferries, and we have an experiment underway that's going to start soon, which is a good first step. We've got to think about how we make our local roadways and our highways better. Uh, we've got to think about uh, ride sharing, clearly, which will become more and more important, and autonomous vehicles, and how do they play into this, et cetera, and what they really do to the capacity of roads. It seems like they would create a great deal more capacity. I am encouraged. I am, I'm not here. What time? <laughs> you, know, I, I, you know, I talk to companies all the time about moving down here and moving jobs down here, and, and we're going to, is this working? No. 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 Talk to companies all the time, and you know, uh, all over the Northeast, the Midwest, Canada, about bringing jobs down here, etc. And we're going to have a great deal of luck, and it's going to build on itself over time. But the number one question: I think 10, 20 years ago, it used to be about our education system, but there's a great deal more focus on our education system, both our public education system, our um, our college education system, and the quality of grad programs, and start, et cetera. But the number one question is. Can and how are their employees, what are their employees that downtown? How are their employees going to affect downtown? What we need for transportation? They want to be in an urban environment. What do they want to be in a rural environment? Transportation is the biggest question they have in our mind. We need that process. We need the discussion. We need to come up with a vision for that about how we will be solving that problem in this area over the next several decades. Um, I talked about on a regional basis. I talked about on a local basis uh, how important it is to. Um, how important it is to think about all that. I'm not here to advocate right now. I'm not smart enough. I haven't done the work. I don't, I, I don't know. These are very detailed studies that are going to be underway. I am not here right now to advocate for any particular mode of transportation, nor any particular um, ability to finance it, uh, means of financing any particular uh, uh, mode of transportation. They're all, all of this should be on the table. I am here to advocate for the process and moving the process along, moving the conversation along. As a community, no matter where you live here and what your economic situation is, we need to be thinking about this. We need to be looking at it in a great deal, in great detail. We need, we need to be learning, making good choices, and figuring this out over the next couple of years. So if we can meet the means, uh, so if we can meet the demands transportation-wise of an area that is poised to be one of the top five uh, economic powerhouses in the country in 20 or 30 years. We can get there, but transportation's got to be a very important means and a very important part of that discussion. So thank you for the time. It is my honor at this point in time, now this is what <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, it's my honor at this point in time to be able to announce that we're going to see a video. <laughs> and after that, uh, we will all welcome up here our CEO, uh, Catherine Hart, uh, who will uh, be delighted to say a few words. Transportation is key to regional economic development. Aren't we comparing Tampa's per capita spending and transit between Atlanta, Dallas, Charlotte, and Jacksonville? We do more. Hillsboro Area Regional Transit Authority services approximately 1,000 square miles, nearly the size of Rhode Island. We drive over 9 million miles per year. That's 19 round trips to the moon. We've created countless innovations along the way, such as flamingo fares. Hyperlink, the nation's first to offer transit-operated rideshare service. And one bus away, providing real-time departure info with native apps and a dynamic planning feature. Heart 
was even first in Florida to push live data into the Google Trip Planner. To improve our environmental footprint, our entire fleet is transitioning to compressed natural gas. And we're ISO certified in environmental sustainability. Hart is also leading efforts to advance transportation options and public-private partnerships. We are committed to improving our transit efforts. For our riders, Hillsborough County, and the planet. Join us, and together, let's go beyond the bus.
that are looking at our regional solutions already. Third part is beyond the bus. We are already beyond the bus. Now let's make no mistake, we have an excellent bus and van game. Do we have an excellent bus and van service? The Federal Highway Administration says we will average individually 13,406 miles this year. I would drive 74.4 miles four years to hit Vera and Barbara's driving record. I would drive from 16 to 90 with no accidents to hit this million miles. Mr. Duran's 148.8 years. I didn't get through my permit without an accident. <laughs> I'm disqualified. It's the foundation of this excellent work with great teams. Kim Lee is in here, wave your hand. Customer service, getting folks where they need to go. It's an excellent team that brings us excellent service. Uh, and how excellent are we? Well, from 2010 to 2015, ridership went up 20%. Fare box recovery went up 25%. Service on the street only went up 4%. That's an, extent, it's an outstanding achievement. We were well ahead of national trends. How do we compare? You saw the numbers for Jacksonville. In 2014, Hart did about 15 million trips. Jacksonville, with that much extra money, did 11 million. Another way to slice it in 2014, about 15 million trips on 189 buses. Cincinnati did 16.6 .6 million trips on 350 buses. So no way that you look at it avoids that we are effective and we are efficient. We are dominating this game. Uh, are we constrained? We are constrained, you saw the money. Uh, our operations facility east of Tampa is full, which means even if we can get in another bus, we can't get it in the maintenance cycle. So the 189 buses out here are what you're going to see for the foreseeable future. You'll see more late night and weekend, you'll see creativity, but we are constrained in space. Uh, and while we had meteoric growth, we had great growth, 2016 is a different world. You've heard this expression, we vote with our feet. People are voting to ride share, to bike share. The $2 gas and making it easier to ride with friends. Our universe is moving. Now we still have fantastic service. Just yesterday we talked to our board of directors. On time performance is up for bus and for van. Thank you very much. Uh, our vehicle, our fleet reliability is up. Our complaints are down. And our regular surveys with customers show they see an improvement year after year. We have an excellent product, but it's time to really dig down and talk in our communities about what we look like in 2018, 2020, and beyond. So this year, you won't just see us kicking off a big regional study. You'll also see Hart down <coughs> in the trenches talking to folks about what that transit network needs to look like. Where does the bus grow with autonomous technology, ride share, and our partnerships? Does this mean we blow up the network? I don't know. We're going to hear back, and folks will tell us what they want to see. So yes, we have constraints, but what are we not constrained in? Innovation and imagination. You saw a lot of really neat stuff in that video, starting with One Bus Away, Shannon Haney, the king of One Bus Away. Um, <laughs> Shannon is on the international board of directors for One Bus Away, which is how we've been first in so many of these technologies. We were the third property in the country to add this. Seattle, New York, and Tampa. That's pretty good company to be in. Uh, when I go on Google Maps, so my car tells me, well, my phone, right, tells me when I'm going and I should turn to get out of the traffic jam. One bus away brings you the same thing into your bus trip. So if you're on the 36 on Dale Mabry and you're going to miss that connection, it tells Vernon Hines because it's a hard connection to get across the street. Now our trip planner will tell you, stay on the bus to the Route 7 at the next transit center. What your car gives you, the bus will give you now. Improved technology in the country, Shannon, but more important, helpful for the folks using us every single day. And we're proud of these achievements. Um, we're not just first in the country on things, we were one of the first 10 transit agencies in the world to push live data into Google. That was a lot of finagling, Shannon. Thank you for making that happen. Uh, so we, we have a lot of leadership, a lot of cool technology, not just on the bus, but before it. You saw our fancy flamingo. Uh, the Flamingo Fair is a project led with Hart and Pinellas Transit uh, to bring regional transit solutions into your fare technology. So what does that mean in English? It means Pasco, Pinellas, Hillsborough, Sarasota, Manatee, and Citrus will all be on the same fair with Hernando and Polk coming in after we get all of our hard work 